Turbolinks is a gem that will be included by default in new Rails 4 applications, but it's also compatible with Rails 3, so we can use it there in the meantime. This gem can make your application feel faster to the user by using JavaScript to replace the HTML body of new pages instead of relying on a full page load. Well, let's try this gem out in a Rails 3 application. Here's the app I'll be using. It's a to-do list app where I have multiple projects and each project can have a set of tasks where I can check a task off and it'll instantly move it down to completed and back and forth. So let's try TurboLinks in this app. First, I need to go into the gem file and add in the TurboLinks gem into here and then you'll need to run the bundle command to install it. And then next I'll go into the app assets application JS file and add in a line into here to require TurboLinks. Now TurboLinks doesn't depend on jQuery, so you can use it even if you don't use jQuery in your app. Now if I restart my Rails app and reload this page, I can try browsing around my site again and I don't really notice any difference. Now we can check if TurboLinks is active by opening the network inspector in our browser and then browsing around the site and it appears that a full page reload is happening every time I visit a link, so TurboLinks isn't active here. Now I'm using Safari 5 here, which doesn't appear to be supported in the current release of TurboLink, so I could try upgrading to Safari 6 or use something like Google Chrome. One thing we can see with this is that TurboLinks expects a recent browser, but if it's not supported, it will degrade gracefully and our application will still work like we expect. But if you're testing it in development, make sure that the browser you're using does support TurboLinks so that we can catch any odd bugs that might incur from it. So let me try this again, this time using the most recent version of Chrome. And when I have the network tab open and browse through the application, you can see it doesn't do a full page reload, it simply requests the uh, one page from the Rails app and handles it through turbolinks.js. So browsing around the site will just do a single request for each of the pages. This can make the site feel faster to the user because the browser isn't reinterpreting the JavaScript and CSS each time the page loads. So how does this work exactly? Well, what TurboLinks does is listen to a click event on each of the links on a page. And when that happens, it's going to make the request over JavaScript and then take a look at the response body. It will then use JavaScript to update the current page with this new content, replacing the title tag and the body tag so it looks like this new page. It also uses the push state API in JavaScript to handle the URL so it looks like it's going to the other pages. Now this technique is very similar to PJAX, which I covered in episode 294. All right, so this appears to be working great, but you may find some of your existing JavaScript stops working. For example, if I try to check a box here to mark a task as complete, it just doesn't do anything. It doesn't hit our JavaScript, and we don't even seem to get any JavaScript errors to help us out. However, if I try reloading this page and click the checkbox again, now it's working. So what's going on here? So here's the coffee script I have for this app, and what it does is listen to the click event for each of the task checkboxes. And when this happens, it will submit that task form, which ends up triggering the marking a task as incomplete or complete. Now the important line in this situation is right here, this jQuery function call. Another way to write this is $document.ready and passing a function in there. What this will do is listen to the ready event on the document, which will get triggered when the DOM is done loading. This is important here so that we have some checkboxes to select here. Otherwise, if we didn't have this document.ready call, it would try to select the checkboxes before the HTML page is done loading. However, when we're using TurboLinks, that callback will only be triggered on the initial page load. So if we load this page initially, this doesn't have any checkboxes, so it won't listen to the click event on anything. But when we go to a project, it doesn't trigger that DOM ready event since we're kind of technically still on the same HTML document. This is why checking a box here does not end up doing anything. Now there are several events that TurboLinks will trigger, such as the page load event, and we can use this to simulate the DOM ready behavior. So back in our coffee script, here's what this might look like. Uh, first I'll set this uh, function to a variable so we can reference it. I'll pass this to the DOM ready event, and I also want to pass this to the uh, page load event, which TurboLinks will trigger. So that way, whether we're using TurboLinks or not, that this uh, function will be called. So now with that change, our JavaScript behavior is working again with TurboLinks. If you want the behavior to work like this automatically, check out the jQuery TurboLinks gem. 
Now there is another way we can work around this problem. Instead of selecting the elements and then listening to the click event on each one, what we can do is uh, listen to the click event on the document. And this way, it will, each time we get a click, it's going to check if it's on the checkbox for a task and then trigger this callback. So we don't even need to put it any ki in any kind of DOM ready event. This will just be applied to any uh, checkboxes that are added to our HTML even after this JavaScript is executed. So we can try this out and see that it's fully compatible with TurboLinks. And it has a side benefit that if we added tasks using Ajax, those would automatically have that click event applied to them too. Now it's a good idea to keep an eye on the TurboLinks issue tracker because there are some critical gotchas that you should be aware of. For one thing, there are several third-party JavaScript libraries which are incompatible with TurboLinks, such as uh, Twitter Bootstrap or jQuery UI Calendar, and those are getting a fix for them soon, I believe. Also, there are some other odd situations where hitting the reload or back button in certain browsers can cause some unexpected behavior, such as this issue mentioned here where it submits a post request where one expects a get request. And there are workarounds to these kind of issues, uh, such as uh, passing in a data no turbo link uh, attribute in the body tag if it's a post request, as mentioned here. And that will uh, basically disable turbo link for that given page request. But that's a workaround that hopefully won't be needed in future versions of TurboLink, but for now, you can consider doing this. Now with all of these gotchas mentioned, you may be wondering, is TurboLinks worth it? In that case, I recommend you check out this project, TurboLinks Test, put together by Steve Klabnik. It runs a lot of benchmarks for different situations, uh, checking to see if TurboLinks does give a nice speed boost. And in most situations, the results are quite astounding. If you check out the number here in parentheses, that's the time difference in seconds for running a various number of requests. Of course, every application is different, so you may want to take these benchmarks and apply them to your app so you can see if the speed boost is worth it. Now, if you're creating a new Rails 4 application and decide not to use TurboLinks, you can easily remove it by just taking out the gem mentioned in the gem file and removing the line in the application JS file. At least that's the way it works in uh, the master branch of Rails at the moment. Overall, I think TurboLinks shows a lot of promise and can make your Rails application feel faster than ever. Just watch out for the gotchas. Well, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching.